Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Wonder Woman number one. This is a new book from DC Comics. Uh, writer Tom King and superstar artist in the making Daniel Sampierre join forces for this action-packed relaunch and the beginning of what will be undoubtedly a become a groundbreaking run on the character. Uh, that's pretty high praise there. Uh, DC is setting the bar very high, but uh, I mean, with this team, I can see why they feel very confident. Uh, this is issue one or 801 in the legacy count. And it is the first book of Wonder Woman's in this Dawn of DC era. Uh, let me give you a quick synopsis, then we'll talk more about this book. The Amazon warrior is now a wanted outlaw. A new era for the Amazon warrior begins from the superstar team of Tom King and Daniel St. Pierre. After a mysterious Amazonian is accused of mass murder, Congress passes the Amazon Safety Act, barring all Amazons from U.S. soil. To carry out their plans, the government starts a task force, the Amazon Extradition Entity Acts, uh, to remove those who do not comply by any means necessary. Now, in search for the truth behind the killing, Wonder Woman finds herself an outlaw in the world she swore to protect. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is all this is all this stuff that kind of gives you a really cool intro in this. Now, I will say I wasn't fully sold by the premise of the book, uh, maybe throughout half of the issue. It took me a second to get there, uh, but I think Tom King loves to build a slow burn. Uh, you know, like there's a we spend a lot of time without even seeing Wonder Woman in the book because we are trying to kind of reestablish this world in, in which Wonder Woman's being a part of, right? Uh, but before that, before we even get to, to Diana's character, we have to talk about the incident. We have to explain everything that's going on. And I think the comic book does that very efficiently. Uh, let's talk about, let me pull up some preview art so you can talk about, we can talk about Sam Pierre's art. Uh, it is just amazing to see. Uh, I love the paneling of the, you know, like when when you break the, the pool, table and like all the all this kind of motion stuff it's 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 not easy to show it in comic books in a static medium right uh but then we get to see a lot it's really more about like what's going on on the other side of the table like who's talking what's going on uh and we get to see you know this amazon who we're not sure who it is yet uh as they kind of come in and they start beating up everyone now I think Sam Pierre could have really gone for it here, but the choice to just show us the window and start zooming out in this page, uh, it is even more because it leaves everything up to the imagination of the viewer or the reader. So now I will say I'm not a big fan of these pages with a lot of text. Uh, this feels to me a little bit redundant because they're all kind of, you know, it, it's moving us through the story, but in comics, I'd rather see it than kind of have it be told. That would be my my only complaint. But I think the announcers here for the TV are are there to show the full impact of, like, this is a big deal. You know, all the channels are covering it, uh, and we're kind of seeing how the story has been developed, and this story has engulfed all of the nation. So it's definitely there for a purpose. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of that approach. But, you know, other than that, I really enjoy the book. Uh, I think it it's setting up to be a really fun book. Uh, having Wonder Woman, who is this powerful god, just also be you know try trying to stop Wonder Woman with the laws of mortal men uh, seems like a seems like a bad choice. Uh, but she also has a code, and she also has a people that she's responsible for. Uh, this is going to be really interesting. I didn't even show we didn't even get to see diana in the preview pages which is insane uh but there are some really cool covers for this issue so make sure to go check those out they'll be at the end of the video as well so overall really enjoy this book uh highly highly recommend if you're trying to jump in you don't there's no uh prior need required you don't even need to have read uh there there is story in issue 800 uh i mean you should because it's a fun story but it doesn't, it's not even that required reading. You can start from here fresh with Wonder Woman. So if you've ever wanted to jump into a Wonder Woman uh, run, but have been a little bit uh, afraid of like 
not being lost. You get everything you need here in this story. So uh, let me know what you thought about this book down in the comments as always. Thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Catwoman number 57. This is part three of Gotham War. So let's take a look at the creative team behind this book. This book is written by Tini Howard with art by Nico Leon, Veronica Gandini in colors, Lucas Gattoni on letters. Uh, beautiful cover by David Nakayama. So as we know, this is part three. So this is following up from uh, the latest Batman issue. So make sure to go read that before going into this. Uh, so this is part three. So we have a one shot. We have uh, an issue of Batman that precedes this story. Uh, but let me give you a quick synopsis here. While Batman finds himself more and more isolated, Selina is never alone. With a volunteer army and two powerful generals by her side, the ballet between her and Bruce enters its, ne its next act with a shocking twist. This book has definitely, oh, this story has definitely been full of twists and turns. Uh, so if you haven't read the Batman issue, we're going to be spoiled by some of the art here because I have to kind of touch on those events and you're going to see something like a character show up. Uh, but there's also a really cool turn here that I feel like I should have seen coming, but you know, I'm so engulfed in the story sometimes that I just, I just want to write it out. Uh, but this is a very good issue. I love the way Tini Howard writes uh, Catwoman. Like, she just really captures her voice and this aloofness, but also, like, this sense of duty. Uh, I don't know. It, it's really cool. Uh, but let's take a look at the, pre the preview art here. And, look, going from Jorge Jimenez to, to another book, like, continuing a Jorge Jimenez story uh, is a tall task. But Nico Leon and, uh, and Gandini really are up for the task here. Uh, I really love, like... Their styles are not the same, but they're very similar, very stylized, very dynamic and fluid. Uh, and, you know, here we have Vandal Savage and his new redesigned outfit. Uh, he is now the owner of uh, of the Wayne Manor. So Bruce really feels like he's lost everything. And we can really see that in these next few panels, right, as he sits there in front of his parents' grave. Uh, and then we cut back to, to Catwoman. And everything that's going on with Selena is also very cool. Uh, this book is going 100 miles a minute, and it's really fun to see. Uh, I love the big sound effects that we've seen throughout the the story, uh, and I just really think that developing this relationship between Jason and Catwoman and this idea that they are doing this for the benefit of Gotham while Batman is fighting it, it seems, you know, it's putting everyone at odds. So uh, I also really think that Jason loves to... <laughs> to get on Bruce's nerves. So there's definitely a lot of that driving this as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely enjoy this issue as well. Really enjoying the story. Chip Zdarsky and Tenny Howard are plotting something really, really fun. <clears throat> so if you have read this, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Uh, stay tuned until the end of the video so you can see some of the variants that uh, you'll, you'll have this week. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, uh, stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Batman Superman World's Finest number 19. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into the review. This book is written by Mark Wade with art by Travis Moore, Tom Robin Villain, and Colors Letters by Steve Wands. This is part two of the world's finest origin in Phantom Riddles. Uh, so, yeah, people uh, had been going missing, uh, and this kind of led Batman and Superman to meet up. This is their first meeting, uh, or at least a retelling of their first meeting, or maybe a retcon, however you want to see this book as. Uh, but let me give you a quick synopsis here. The origin of the world's finest team concludes in this story. What of all things could tie the Riddler and the Phantom Zone together? 
and what secrets will the Dark Knight and the Men of Steel learn about one another that will define their friendship? All these, all this, and a lead-in into the upcoming event set in present day. So, one really fun thing about this book is that, and this is mainly for people that are reading all this other DC stuff. Uh, Mark Wade is using this book to like plant seeds for other stories, like we saw it with the Devil Neza and everything that happened uh, during Lazarus Planet, and we're seeing it again. Uh, so that that's really fun. I just love how you can go back and you know change the past of these stories to really uh, drive another narrative forward. So, um, and who doesn't love uh, just a meeting of, of Bruce and, and Clark? Like they're such different characters uh, from what they were back then to what they are now. The relationship is one of my favorite in comics. Uh, so let's go take a look at some of the preview art here. Uh, I think Travis Moore does a fantastic job, you know, showing us the big threat, showing us these big fights, but also giving us a good feeling about the Phantom Zone. Like I think a concept that is as abstract as that can be really hard to put onto the page. And, you know, we've seen it interpreted in many different ways. Uh, and I think Moore and the team really do a, a fun job here. I really love Von Villain's colors in the background, too. Like, just having the characters really, really stand out. Uh, but, you know, how is this all going to end? Can they get out of the Phantom Zone? Can Batman and, and Alfred, uh, you know, come back and help Superman? And also, what does this threat mean? How does the, how does the Riddler play all into this? Uh, it's a really fun resolution to this mystery. And like I said... We have some more new stuff going on, going forward, uh, which uh, you'll probably get a little bit of a clue as you see some of the some of the uh, other covers in the back of the video. So really enjoy this one. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Superman number six. This is a new book from DC Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this. Uh, this is part one of a new story written by Joshua Williamson with guest artist Glev Melnikov, uh, colors by Alejandro Sanchez, letters by Aaron and Mayer. Uh, in this issue, a new story arc starts here, the first appearance of a new Superman villain, The Chained Part One. Following the shocking cliffhanger of Superman number five and the events of Night Terrors, Superman has learned that Lex Luthor kept a prisoner beneath Stryker's Island for decades. Who are they, and why did Lex lock him up? Can Superman unlock the secrets of the chain? Wow. Yeah, this is a really, really interesting stuff. Uh, you know, as I've really been enjoying the relationship between Lex and Superman in this uh, current run, as they are trying to work together, but also you can never really trust Lex Luthor, uh, I think Joshua Williamson is giving us a really fun mystery here as we are just, this is only the opening gambit for, for this. Uh, and we, the, the pacing of the book is really good because it drops you right into the story, like in media res, and you kind of have to catch up. Like you, this feels very fast. And I think for a Superman book, that's good. You want to get a lot of action. You want to get a lot of the exposition out of the way so you can get to this mystery uh, until, you know, this book moves really fast until until Clark decides to finally slow down. So it's really interesting to see that it's almost as if we're trying to keep pace with Superman. Uh, and of course, everything that's going on with the, the rest of the cast, uh, you know, Lois dealing with the planet and investigating all this stuff, Lex Luthor being stabbed at um, uh, Stryker's Island and now or at wherever he's locked up and not being sure what's going to happen to him. So just a lot of stuff happening. This is, like I said, a very fast paced issue. But uh, let's take a look at some of the preview art here. Now, I'm not very familiar with uh, Melnikov's art. I do say it is uh, interesting and really fun to see a big, bulky, like, like Superman. Like, you know, somebody that looks really 
kind of powerful and strong, uh, very reminiscent of some of the early 2000s uh, style with like the big barrel chest and just big muscles, like very well defined. Uh, the jawline, very like I, I really like this page of him coming straight out just to kind of display all that stuff. Um, and then as we get into some of the fights, like Malenkov is a fantastic artist. Uh, and I think with with Sanchez colors, they really highlight like how how cool Superman can be. Like I love him seeing him like melting the, the bullets as he's trying to stop these bad guys. And then, you know, everything happening so quickly. I love zooming in on these panels to really display the power of Superman. Uh, and then, of course, we cut to the Daily Planet where Lois Lane is now really busy as the chief. So, yeah, really fun mystery, really fun other stories that are going on. I think Joshua Williamson is juggling this gigantic cast of really fun and important and iconic characters very well. Uh, so this is a fun opening gambit to this new arc, and I'm very excited to see where we go from here. So if you enjoy this issue, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>
uh, Dick Grayson currently does not know anything about that. And that's kind of what this whole mystery is going to lead us to. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this issue. Great start on New York. Uh, and like I said, uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Nightwing become a pirate and, and following that story. So really fun stuff. As always, uh, let me know what you thought about this issue down in the comments. And thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. In this video, I'll be doing a review for Rare Flavors Number 1. This is a new book from Boom Studios. Let's check out the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Ram V with art by Felipe Andrade, letters by Anne Wool Design. Uh, let me give you a quick synopsis of here. Let's talk about this book a little bit before we dive into it. Uh, <clears throat> discover the tantalizing tale of Ruben Bakish, a demonic Rakshasa with a down-to-earth dream of becoming the next Anthony Bourdain. To achieve his vision, Ruben enlists Mo, a filmmaker who has been who has seen better days, to document the world-renowned cuisine of India and the people behind such glorious food. But little does Mo know that there's more to Ruben that meets the eye, and the mortals play a darker role in the show than they were prepared for. Entice your palate with the follow-up offering to the Eisner, Harvey, and Ringo Award-nominated team uh, of Ram V and Felipe Andrade in this series, painstakingly prepared for fans of Anthony Bourdain's Hungry Ghost and Eat the Rich. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just with the pedigree of the team here, uh, this was a, a must-check out. Uh, I'm a big fan of their previous work. Uh, big fan of the work individually as well, like on the you know on their own, uh, and the story that involves food and maybe some demonic forces or just a travel. I also the Anthony Bourdain of it all. Uh, like there's a lot of stuff here that I re like. Those are really interesting quadrants and ideas that we're visiting in this issue, as well as when we get into it. Let's let's talk about the art. I mean, you know. From the exploration of here, as we can see, we're introduced to Ruben. Now, you guys know I'm not a big fan of reading a lot of prose, but this was very, very interesting context here in this page. Uh, I love the representation of the, of you know, viewing a painting at the museum. And as we go through this, you can tell that there's something uh, off about uh, about Ruben, who we see here. I think Andrade very subtly hints at a lot of these things. We see the little fang. We see the same color of the eyes. Uh, we see the grin of the glasses. And even the eyes have something to them extra, right? Uh, but all this set up in this beautiful, beautiful background uh, of this gallery and then the market. As we go in and we start talking about food, there's a lot of food talk in this uh, uh in this book as well. And I'm not as familiar with a lot of the cuisine that's talked about, but it's really cool to explore. So this is a fun combination. Now I will say, I think Ramvi and, and uh, Andrade deliver a few ideas that are a little bit high concept and a bit heady. So this might be something that I'll wait for the trade or wait for the collection or the arc to be completed. Uh, but I was, I was very happy to check it out. I was able to get a really nice uh, foil cover uh, for this. So very happy with picking this up from the comic shop this week. So if you have read this comic, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Everyone remember to share, like, subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Grim number 13 from Boom Studios. Uh, this is a new comic. Let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. 
This book is written by Stephanie Phillips with art by Flaviano, Rico Renzi on colors, letters by Tom Napolitano, chapter 13, an interlude. So in this uh, issue, Eddie, Jess, and Marcel each will have to face their own personal hell. The pain of their own mortal lives are brought to afterlife in grim detail, but the hell itself still awaits. And Annabelle and the parasitic entity bonded to her have foreboding plans for life. Uh, so, yeah, this feels like a really nice break um, from the main story while still moving everything forward. Uh, we get to experience maybe some, uh, you know, exploring some of the, the fears and the, uh, the things that make some of our characters that we're following. In this case, Marcel is probably the main focus of this issue, as you can see from the cover. Uh, so exploring their past or past trauma or, you know, whatever, whatever this hell is bringing them, bringing to them. So really interesting stuff. As always, the storytelling here is just very exciting because we want to know more about these characters. Uh, by this point, if we are 13 issues in, uh, we are very involved with what everything that's going on. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see how this plays out. Uh, let's talk about some of the pre the, the, the art. So Flaviano has a, a very interesting style of how flexible uh, the art can be like this looks completely different specifically this first page the art style is very different from a lot of the stuff that we've seen uh, all along you know all really here also uh, pushed by uh, Rico Renzi's colors that are a lot more muted and, and darker they really convey a different tone uh, obviously we know this is also supposed to be in French which adds another layer of like What's Marcel doing here? What, what are we going to find out about him? And, you know, I love all the background details. As you can see, the little gargoyles at the bar. Uh, you can tell that this is some kind of underground, like, club, performance place, whatever the case may be. So, yeah, really, really interesting stuff. It's, it's the, you know, Cabaret Do Not. Uh, so whatever this place is, it is somewhere that can definitely get you into trouble. Uh, so as the story unfolds, that definitely happens. Uh, so I quite enjoy this. Uh, it is broken up a little bit uh, from the main story. But like I said, it's still, it's a detour that still adds um, to everything that we're following through. So, and, you know, Marcel's a really cool character. So it's really fun to see some more stuff focused just around him. Uh, so, yeah, quite enjoyed this one. Uh, I picked up a beautiful variant cover that you can see uh, in the middle at the end of the video. So. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Rumpa's Room Number 1. This is a new book from AWA. Uh, let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. Now, look at this credits page. It is pretty fucking sick. Uh, so yeah, AWA presents Rumpa's Room. Written by Mark Russell with art by Ramon Rosanas. Colors by Ive Zvorsina. And letters by End World Design. A beautiful cover by Tony Harris that really tells you a lot more than like once you read this book go check out go check the cover out again once you're like you're done with the issue go check the cover out and just look at how much the cover was telling you about the story overall it is so well done i i really really loved it also the art in the interior and the cover are uh very similar styles not exactly the same they definitely have some differences but in style i feel like they're very similar so that was nice sometimes we get some covers that um i'm not gonna say they're misleading but the art is so different than the interiors that it's a little bit jarring right from what your expectations were um i really like when we get to wednesday and thursday and later in the week because that's when i get to dive into some of the indie stuff uh and i will never not check out a mark russell book like I'm, I as as of now, I don't think I've read anything by Mark Russell that I didn't enjoy. Uh, so he's kind of earned my trust into saying like, uh, 
you know what? I'm going to check out this number one, and I think it's going to be fun. So let me give you a quick synopsis before we talk more about this book. Uh, Eisner Award-winning writer Mark Russell returns to AWA with his latest dark satire with art by Ramon Rosanas. Uh, meet Bob Shrunk, technocrat billionaire, collector of bad art, and victim of a hideous skin condition that can only be treated with highly illicit and definitely not FDA-approved face cream that must be harvested uh, from human beings. Bob isn't unfair, though. He's happy to let his guest select who will be the next from the rumpus room to their doom. There's just one thing Bob doesn't know. One of his current guests is an undercover cop carrying cop, and she's carrying a concealed gun. Wow, that synopsis really gave away uh, a lot of what's going on with issue one. I'm glad I didn't read it. Uh, I'll, hopefully, I'll go ahead and put a, a spoiler tag in the description. Uh, hopefully, you guys see that. But either way, this book was a lot of fun. Uh, I love a good mystery uh, like this. Uh, this probably will be about five or six issues, which will give us enough time to just explore this world, explore this mystery. Um, you know, this is definitely there's definitely a lot of satire here. You definitely recognize a lot of what's going on, uh, and it's all really well complemented by uh, Rosanna's beautiful art, like just magnificent. Like I really love the style. It is bright. It is. Uh, it doesn't have to look photorealistic, but it just gives you that vibe of like, this is a world that's lived in. Uh, yeah, I really love the um, um, Mark Russell's quippy dialogue between the characters and just you immediately, you immediately hate this dude. Uh, so yeah, really, really fun stuff. I think it was just so much fun. And as we get to it, uh, like I said, the mystery unfolds. It's a very well-paced book because it doesn't really throw you into the deep end right away. It sets up a little a few things. We want to know why is our protagonist following, you know, what are, what are they looking for? Why do they have to go in here? And how much are they willing to risk uh, for that? So, yeah, this one was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. It's funny. It's, uh, it has a really fun mystery uh, twist and turns. And then I'm expecting a lot. We're introduced to a lot in this first issue, so I'm expecting a lot of that stuff to just evolve. Uh, so yeah, great combination of a beautiful art by Rosanis, uh, bright colors by Zvorsina, and just really fun stuff from Russell. So great work. Um, really, really, I'm glad I found this one. It is going to be five issues I, I just saw on the cover. It's a one out of five. So I mean, this is going to be a really fun uh, contained story here. So if you picked this up, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Hexagon Bridge, number one. This is a new book from Image Comics. Let's talk about the creative team behind it. And this is actually all done by Richard Blake. I'm not familiar with Blake's work, but uh, if this issue is any inkling of the, the levels of quality that I can expect, uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing some more of uh, the work uh, so let's talk about what is what, what's going on with this book. In this book, explorers Jacob Ele and Elena Armlin find themselves trapped in a strange parallel dimension of elusive landscapes and shifting architecture inhabited by mischievous entities. Now it's up to their clairvoyant daughter, Atlee, and a sentient robot, Staten, to rescue them. Uh, there is a lot of like, what the hell am I reading here? Uh, but man, was it fun to dive into this. Like, there is this concept of this uh, different dimension, this parallel world uh, that we visit in this book. And man, is it so much fun to see how uh, Blake just shows us that on the page. Uh, I think the, the story and the mystery is intriguing. Uh, the characters, as we kind of see it, uh, is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the pacing because each of the characters that we're kind of following, 
Uh, as I mentioned, you know, Jacob gets his little piece of like a chapter. Elena gets a little chapter. Adley gets a little chapter. So like it is all a, a very cool way to introduce us into this world, you know, complemented very well by this beautiful art. Like I could just read, I could just see the art and watch the art without any of the story in the context. And I would still be very satisfied with this book. Like it is beautiful, whether it's the frozen tundra that we see here uh, or this other dimension that we're going to explore as we move over to the next few panels. And there's so much more. I picked a few pages that I didn't want to give too much away in the review, but man, some of these pages, I can't conceptually, they are so intriguing to look at that I just had to stare at them for a moment. Like, you know, the paneling and as we kind of zoom out in some of these instances, like it is just very well done. This is this is just top tier comic making for sure. Uh, I think sometimes creators that do everything themselves have a very specific vision and Blake's vision here is very clear. So very excited to follow on this story uh, and to see this mystery and explore this world, this other dimension and seeing where things go. Uh, so yeah, definitely really, really fun stuff on this one. Uh, so if you pick this up, uh, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. If you haven't, go pick it up. I'm really, really recommending this one. Uh, so stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here on the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>
you know, from the art. So either way, because it is a big sound effect, that's also a big thing that they do in manga. So whoever is responsible for that, great work. I really love it. That's why I, this isn't even the full page. I kind of cropped it just this big panel for you guys to take a look at on this one. And yeah, of course, once the Witcher is done with his job, not everyone likes to hold up there in the bargain. So <clears throat> this is kind of where we begin with uh, our hero running into a tough spot and having to try to get out of it. And this isn't even the beginning of the story. This is just kind of all the setup of like, here's everything you need to know about Girl. This is a first six pages or so that very well tell you who he is, what kind of powers does he have, why he, what kind of skills does he possess, uh, you know, and also what type of individual he is, right? Mentioning that we thought he had a deal obviously brings up that he's an honorable person, uh, but he is not, he won't be hesitant to act. Uh, you already know he's a skilled fighter. So like, yeah, great, great work. Just building up this world, setting up all this stuff that lets you know that the Witcher, um, you know, who he is, what he brings to the world and what you can expect from the rest of the story. And then from there, the story very efficiently gets going. And I really enjoyed it. Beautiful art, beautiful colors. And like I said, I mentioned, uh, I love those big sound effects, those big splotchy, uh, you know, sound effects with uh, with some of those fights. So uh, if you're a Witcher fan, you'll definitely want to check this out. If you've never encountered the Witcher, maybe this is your entryway. I don't know. Uh, but as always, if you have read this book, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Uh, and stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Tissue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Big Game number three. This is a new book from Image Comics over at Mila World. Uh, let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Mark Miller, with art by Pepe Ross, Giovanna Nero on colors, letters by Clem Robbins. Uh, so, the as I talked about last uh, issue, the most unhinged, the craziest event of the summer uh, continues in issue three. Uh, so, the fraternity is continuing to round up and just kill all the superheroes that you might have ever read that have been written by Mark Miller. So in this issue, Nemesis is murdering his way through all your favorite uh, Miller World characters. The Chrononauts are down, but now Kick-Ass, Hit-Girl, and Huck are in his sights. Will the Kingsman spy organization be able to stop him before he follows? Uh, the quick answer is no, but it is done in such a fantastic way that I don't even care. Uh, so I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of these properties, which I think is really enhancing the reading experience. I've been reading a lot of Miller's world, um, Miller's books for a long time now. And although I'm not familiar with every single character that shows up, specifically some of the villains, some of the villains are a little bit more obscure to me. I think they're from the book Magic Order, a few of the ones we see on this issue. And that's probably why I'm not familiar with them. I haven't I haven't read that series yet, uh, but it's something that's now on my list. I think this is a, a perfect way to have a really fun summer event. Uh, and also kind of like plug all the properties that you've been working on forever. Uh, yeah, Mark Miller and the team are leaving no stone, no stone unturned when it comes to this book. So let's uh, get into it. So we open up with beautiful Pepe Larraz art. I love Pepe Larraz. I think his art is fantastic. Some of the, the shots, the dynamism he chooses to use, some of the angles, uh, uh, you know, and if you haven't read Huck, I highly recommend that because that's where we open up. Huck is on a mission to deliver this little bear uh, back to his family. And this is when tragedy literally strikes. Uh, and, you know, Huck has always been one of the more like uh, simple and almost chill type of properties from Mark Miller. Uh, like it is it is such a juxtaposition. And I kind of love the way this was laid out with uh, both panels, right? You know, the very cool tone of the first panel as Huck is just jumping around. Uh, and then we have on the other side of the page, 
the nuclear bomb hitting Huck and exploding everything. And of course, he's carrying a little cub, a uh, little polar bear cub, and that's also blown up. So yeah, this book doesn't care who you are. Uh, you're going to get taken out. The fraternity is leaving everyone in the dust. And the same here in this uh, in this next few pages, we see Superior. That's a hero that I'm not very familiar with. It looks like it's um, this young man, or at least when he was younger, he turned into Superior or with some kind of deal with the devil, whatever, you know, comic book shenanigans. And I believe these two villains, just based on their power set, are probably from the magic order as they seem to be magic related i'm not sure let me know in the comments if you if you know and then the last preview page i'll show you we have some of the characters from night club if you're not reading night club go check it out also really fun uh so yeah and this is these are just the beginning pages like every page is full wall to wall of just like characters this world building and really messed up things that are happening all throughout uh i think this is one of the issues that finally brings a little bit of hope like after three issues of swimming in this like despair of the fraternity taking down every single uh possibility closing every door uh this issue feels like maybe the turning point but we could also be setting ourselves up for disappointment you never really know like I don't even I don't trust this issue. I don't trust this series anymore. Uh so highly, highly recommend this one. I've been really enjoying it. Like I said, I think if you're familiar with some of Mark Miller's work, you'll enjoy this even more. Uh, but the book is very good about letting you know what's going on, who's on the page. Uh, I'm not familiar with some of the newer stuff like the ambassadors, who were a big part of this. I've also never read Chrononauts, even though i I know about it. So yeah, like it's it's just stuff that has been on the surface. So Really enjoyable to see some really neat uh, back matter as well. That's more related to the industry, which was fun to see as well. So highly, highly recommend this one. Uh, and let me know which cover you pick up. We have a few different, you know, we have the main Pepe Ross cover. We'll also a black and white version. And we have an ambassador's cover on this one. So if you have read this book, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell. So you know when we go live, that is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.